What's up, YouTube? Griever here, and I am here today with my review of the bonus uh, from the Clammy Mystery Box that I got, and that is the Magic Shot Skeet Shooting Game. Um, now, what this pretty much is, it's a skeet shooting game. I have the board set up over there. I was going to do a, um, a shooting demonstration of how the game works, but unfortunately, I have it literally just hanging in my garage. And you really do need a backing for this, because as I'm shooting at it, it's swaying back and forth, and I, stupid me, did not realize physics. Um, but I will go over the crux of what it is, and pretty much what it is, it's a skeet shooting game. You can see the picture right here of it. I'm going to try and keep the glare out. And pretty much the way it works is you're given... Uh, five targets, three ten point two five point targets. You can do various games on it. You can go up the sides, up the middle where you can, your shot kind of crosses over, or you can do however, which would be either up the middle or sidelines. The delay between shots or between the way the, the electronic skeets kind of like light up the targets and all is really really long. But on the plus side, though, it does give you a chance to reload. It's not just firing off, you know, left and right. So the game itself is somewhat considerate. It's not a terrible game. It's fun for a little bit. I didn't really care for it, but it could have an appeal for, like, somebody who wants to just, like, you know, either practice their shots or whatever. I probably wouldn't advise using an NIC primary on it because you'll almost probably wind up breaking it. That may be a uh, that may be a spring video. <laughs> so, but going over to the crux of why I wanted to do the review of that, and that was this thing, and that is, and this is the blaster that comes with the, the game. I pretty much what this is it's a reshot is a single shot side priming night finder. Um, I've, I'm going to go over the internals of this in my next part of the video, but I'm just going to go over the function of the blaster, some of the things that it does come with, and then we will do our internal review, what I, can, what I think some of the mod potentials are, and if I can do anything, I may do something, and then I'll give you guys my final overall thoughts of it. Right now I can tell you it's probably going to be positive. But going over to some of the more unique features or accessories that came with the blaster is this piece, which I don't know how well it's showing up against my black uh, Kingdom Hearts hoodie, but what it is is this green piece connects to the bottom of the targeting system. And what it is, it's actually just a place to, um, it's pretty much a gun rack. The blaster will slide right on right there and it keeps it balanced well enough to where it's not going to like tip or sway or anything like here I'll show you I'm barely putting any pressure on it I, well I'm barely holding on to it and it's barely tipping to the back but you also have two points here where it's connected to the battery pack slash display piece so yeah it's going to hold pretty well so that's actually really neat I may wind up just screwing this to somewhere in my uh, somewhere in my garage and just like you know kind of just keep it like you know good old boy got my shotgun done hooked up right. I apologize to any of my southern viewers. Um, I know a lot of people in the south, y'all wonderful people. Next thing that it comes with is this, which is actually a dart clip. Now the dart clip actually functions three different ways, even though it's all the same function. You can put this on your belt, which I'm not going to demonstrate, or you can put it on to the blaster. And now it's built into where it can slide in on the left side of the blaster. Or, and this is downside, it's a pitch to get off. Or the right side of the blaster. Ow. Ah, damn it, I just broke it. Well, there goes that. But either way, that's the way that kind of works. Honestly, I did not like this because, A, if you put it on the blaster itself, well, yeah, you have easy access to your rounds right here. 
I'm left-handed. I'm holding it with my left hand. The handle, the grip of the blaster itself is small, um, even though I can still hold on to it comfortably. With this thing here, it's very uncomfortable. Um, so I would honestly not advise really using it. Plus, also, it, it it's not like a nerf. It's not like the, uh, what is it, the... The Battle Break, that was it. The Battle Break or the Rebel Heartbreaker bow, where you had the clips that, where you have the uh, dart holders that can actually just, you just slide the darts in. You can't really slide these in, and I'm using the original darts that it came with, which are the weird green um, nerf, the green nerf dart, uh, suction cup darts. You can squeeze it in, but the only problem is though, as you can see here, it kind of pinches the darts really weird, and I don't like that. So, well, the intentions were good, the execution was flawed on it, so. But, anyway, like I said, this is what pretty much is the, the cream of the crop of this whole setup, and that is the blaster. Now, it actually does get... Decent ranges. Um, my garage is probably about 20 feet and flat. I'm hitting at least 20 feet flat because I can hit my garage door and it can bounce and it stays actually straight. So I can say flat. This thing's probably hitting maybe about 25. Maybe. Yeah, I'll stick at 25. I was going to say maybe 30, but no, 25 is good. The And the best part is... Since it can fire those weird suction cup dart thingies, it can already fire nerf darts. And it fires nerf darts actually really well. Uh, there's a bit of a vacuum load actually when I had this all the way in on my last shot. So, yeah, this thing fires elite darts like awesomely. So, this thing is definitely prime candidate for modding potential, but I will let you decide because now we are going to go on to the internals of this blaster. Okay, for sake of time, I've already unscrewed everything, and surprisingly, for such a small blaster, this thing is a pain in the ass to open. First off, thankfully, everything separates, so if you're going to do a paint job on this, it is most probably going to be the most paint-friendly blaster possible, because all the yellow because all the yellow pieces from the white separate. The white separates from the center blasters. And even the, you can even paint these and keep your orange tip. So, that's on a plus. For sake of time, I've unscrewed everything. Literally everything. The, everything is the same size screw, which are these little silver screws. And surprisingly enough, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it actually has a very, very small Phillips head cross in here, as opposed to it or at least to me it seems it's a little smaller than what it should be. But pretty much the only thing in the white area of the blaster is the trigger and the trigger spring. Um, oh, going back to the screws, I apologize. To remove the priming nub on the uh, for the blaster itself, there is one small tiny little screw, and that's actually the only one that differs in size on this thing. But now getting into the actual internals of the blaster, and oh, didn't unscrew all the way. My apologies. And this is what we have, which is basically a pull, which is basically a pullback night finder. It's got a direct plunger system. It does have a return spring, so that when you do prime it, it does bring back the. Um, that priming slide, and it does look like it is hollow in parts, so you can fill the piece itself in with epoxy, but you're really pulling back just this little thin piece of plastic, so you're either going to have to beef that up, or you're going to have to, f or you may not be able to do too much of a spring, uh, spring combination on this. The... Let's see if we can remove this as well and see what we're dealing with. So 
so you don't have to worry about that. And this is this is pretty much it. You have the catch, which is built into the plunger itself, so that's actually really good. It's only one part. This is your plunger tube, which there is no AR in here, um, but it does have. But the barrel system is pretty much set up like a fire strike, or not a fire strike, but a knife finder. So, and it is glued in, so if you're going to break this apart, you're going to have to either just drill it out, or you're going to have to boil it to separate it, because I don't know if, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to force this apart. The plunger rod and catch system, it looks like it's just built off of what almost looks like a Busby setup, and the spring itself is actually surprisingly beefy. And I'm looking, you're not seeing it on camera, but I'm looking through the plunger to see what is actually in here. And it looks like it's, it almost looks like from the back like a, it really does actually look like a night finder tube. So, I mean, pretty much any to, any mod you can do for a night finder, you can do this thing. Uh, if you want a PC, if you want to do a CPVC coupler. Uh, it would take a little bit of finagling in here, but you could do it. You could put brass in here so that it gets a little better better dart seal with a stronger spring. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there is potential here. Uh, will it require some reinforcements? Probably. Uh, will it require some tweaking if, if there are some, like, good power mods to this? Absolutely. But, over and all, this isn't that bad. If... And they still have these in the stores, and it's not too terribly priced. I would say pick it up. If not, I mean, it's nothing great. You can still get a Night Finder or in, like, you know, Walgreens or other places. Or Fire Strikes, which are just really compact Night Finders. But if you want something unique, I say if you can find these, pick it up. So, I mean, it's not going to be a... T it, it's... It's unique. That's most I can say about it. So I'm going to go now into my final thoughts. So I will see you in a bit once I get this all put back together. So as you can tell, it's not back to my final thoughts. But since you guys didn't get a chance to actually see me really open this up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this whole thing back together on screen just so you can see how everything kind of goes back together. Because to get the trigger back in... It is a, does take a little bit of finessing, so we're going to put this all back together. Um, there's still plenty of lube on here, so I'm not going to worry about redoing that thing. And obviously, as you can tell, I've done no mods to it. So what I will do is once warmer weather comes to the Great Garden State, there will be a cosmetic mod and other stuff to this thing. So, oh, and... Here, it looks like it's just a little nub of nothing, but that's actually a spring rest. So, that you'll probably want to reinforce if you're going to be doing spring upgrades, because it really doesn't look like there's much to those. So, we're going to put the screws back in to hold the plunger tube down. Slip back in the priming handle, and it's easy enough to do. There's a nice, it's got a nice cup in here so that you can see where exactly it's supposed to go. Just pull the plunger back a little bit, and you should be able to fit it in no problem. Then it's just a matter of closing up the faux double barrel. Bring those two back together. Okay, now this is the tricky part that I wanted to show you. What you'd have to do is for the trigger, since the trigger is the only thing that doesn't actually belong to the firing assembly that is not in the 
orange barrels is you put the trigger in this was it that spot? Nope. My bad. This spot here, as you can see, it kind of fits in and you can see where it will catch in, re in reference to the slide mechanism. You put the spring pretty much right on top of it because it fits around the orange here. One piece goes in this spring rest here and the other goes on the other side of this screw port. So when you're holding it down, you can see triggers firing. What you're gonna do then is you're actually gonna hold down the trigger, fit the barrels back in, and there is, you can see two holes drilled in here. These are actually four barrel posts to actually slide in and that would be this barrel post and I believe that barrel post. But what you will have to do is actually, I screwed up, my apologies. What you have to do is you actually have to put the barrel system back on first. And you can see here, there's a little ridge here that actually fits right into, well, why are you being difficult for me on camera? Here it is. Fits back in. And what you're going to do is, you're going to take the trigger, lift the barrels a little bit to slide the trigger system in, right underneath, the, right into that, that, that barrel post. Take the spring. and get that right over as well. And there you go. And that's it. So then it's just a matter of completing the body again and you're and putting on the the pull piece and that's it. You're done. So well, I realize I did make a little mistake on the trigger. That's pretty much how you put this bad boy back together. So now I will give you my final thoughts. Okay, so my final thoughts on this thing. Um, it's got plenty of potential on it, in my opinion. It's pretty much a reshelled night finder with a built-in catch into the plunger system. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you can. You would normally be able to do the night finder or a uh, or a, um, a fire strike with this thing. Um, it's really easy to work with. There are not a lot of moving parts. It has a very basic barrel system. It's got a decent spring on it to begin with. The trigger system is super easy. I mean, there's real, I mean, outside of a price point, which again, if I can find a price point, it will be in the comment, it will be in the uh, description down below, or I'll put an annotation in somewhere over here, or somewhere um, with the price point. But I mean, you can go out and spend like, you know, 10 bucks on a fire strike or depending on where you live, if they still have night finders, 10 bucks on a night finder. And you'll have something that is solid and well known and easy, easy to mod. Or if you can get this for a couple of bucks, not only do you get a fun, fun game out of it, but you also get a unique sidearm out of it. So, I mean, you can go into a pistol round with a night finder or a fire strike, or you can go into a pistol round with pretty much a tiny sawed off shotgun and just like still, you know, and still be uh, competitive. Uh, overall, that's my review of it. The game is meh. This thing I'm really, really, really liking. So, I mean, outside of this, Thank you, Clyde, for sending me this. Um, this is going to be getting some really good use and a nice overhaul come the uh, summer months when epoxy will not take five days to dry and I will not free I will not freeze off my little toes trying to go outside and spray paint. So thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. If not, throw me a comment. Just let me know what you think of the channel and the video overall. And I will see you guys next time. Later.